Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, Julie, to September 14th. And I have to say the feedback Mm -hmm. on the interview that we did yesterday with Steve Powers was fantastic. Yes, I'm hearing good things as well. Yeah, it's great. And if you've not watched, uh, it was actually a a Zoom that we also then made into a podcast. So the podcast audio quality is not like it normally is. But overall, I think you'll agree that the content is superior to most anything else you've probably heard in the realm of real estate interviews probably in the last year or so. So definitely go and listen to that. And again, it's going to be on iTunes, Stitcher, all the normal places, but it's also going to be on YouTube. Just search for our um, our channel, or you can just put in, frankly, you just put in Tim and Julie Harris or Steve Powers, and you'll find it. And definitely give it a listen. It actually was originally scheduled to go for 30 minutes. I think we ended up uh, going 90 because mm-hmm. he and I are, uh, did a lot of role plays. We shared a lot of scripts. We did a lot of fun stuff like that. So definitely check that out. And it inspired that interview, I noticed, from the content that uh, Julie has presented or has created for all of you in the next couple of days. I could tell the Steve interview has inspired Julie to really drill down on yes. a omnipresent, always favorite topic of all of our podcast listeners and our coaching clients and, frankly, us, mm-hmm. which is... Well, we're talking about how to specifically expand your center of influence, but also how to go about actually talking with them. This is one of those quintessential questions that comes up all the time. And in fact, I think that this question came from a premier coaching student and list podcast listener, Grace, after the Steve Powers interview. And she just simply wrote, she actually posted on the private Facebook page for our premier coaching members. She said, I have issues speaking with my center of influence that I've not communicated with in a while. That should be resonating with virtually every podcast listener out there. Yeah, but that, everyone's <laughs> guilty of that, by the way. So Grace, Always. you're not alone. <laughs> That's right. Uh, she said, I don't want them to think I'm only calling because I need referrals. What should I do? Is there a script? So yes, I think this does apply to newbies and grizzled veterans and everyone in between Every podcast listener, this is an ongoing question. So let's start out with a mindset point around that. Mm -hmm. Um, So the fact is, Grace, as lovely as a person as you, I'm sure you are, and as amazing of an agent as I'm sure you are, uh, these people, uh, your centers of influence and past clients who you feel neglectful of, have not probably thought about you or kept track when the last time was that you communicated with them. Okay. Yes. Newsflash, so, they did not put a star on their calendar last time you left them a voicemail, sent them a text, posted something on social, or maybe even called them. So they don't, uh, they have not, like, when, the awkwardness that you are creating for yourself about thinking that they're going to somehow have wondered why you haven't contacted them in forever, um, and now you're just contacting them because you're just wanting something out of them. That's 50% we should be, you should be able to self-resolve when you accept the fact that most people never think about anything other than themselves yeah. and maybe their kids and maybe their spouse and maybe only for like five minutes a day because most people are very, very self-absorbed. Uh, and you can tell that when you talk to people, right? They're always focused in on themselves, which, by the way, is going to make a method one for expanding your centers of influence and past clients. Uh, this uh, We share with this first point with you guys all the time, but it's so powerful. It's incredible. You know, oddly enough, we found ourselves actually sharing this point with a couple FBI agents that That's are right. that are our that. friends. Yeah, we mm-hmm. uh, we have some friends that are in the FBI uh, that live in our uh, near our community here in Puerto Rico, and we are friends with them. They have kids our age, the whole thing, and we had a very very interesting conversation mm-hmm. with them, um, just social stuff, you know. But we ended up telling them about the Ford uh, technique, and it was fascinating to me that the F, uh, people that had gone to Quantico that were FBI agents mm-hmm. would have found that so interesting. But here's the point. When you are thinking about Grace having the thoughts that they're going to be thinking that, well, Grace is just calling because they want something out of me or she wants something out of me. So the first thought is they only think about themselves. So you should hopefully be able to resolve that one, that little first part. The second part is, is you just need to bring something to them of value. So if you're calling them and you're bringing something to them of value, and we're going to talk about that when we go through this podcast series, then they're going to not just appreciate your call, but they're going to look forward to your future calls. And the way to do that is, well, frankly, with the scripts and uh, uh, techniques we're going to share with you. um, But really, if you are just here's a a mindset thought for you, what you want to become, let's say, for example, 
uh, you go to Starbucks every morning or you go to the gym every morning. You just go someplace every morning. And there's somebody there that maybe it's, you know, three times a week. And there's somebody there uh, that every time you see that person, you just are magnetically attracted to them. Have you ever asked why? Why is it that you're, why are there some people in your life that you just automatically want to be around? And what are the qualities that those people have? That's that sort of um, je ne sais quoi or the it factor that people really aspire to have. And oftentimes people will give uh, a lot of credence to how they look and how they carry themselves and posture and all the rest of it. And all those things are true. But the fact is, if I, I've known plenty of um, people that do not put a lot of thought into how they actually physically look, but then have that je ne sais quoi because they have the other qualities that you, we're going to share with you on this podcast series. So uh, number one thought, Grace, is they aren't thinking about you, and that's not a slant against you. That's just the reality of how every human interacts with other humans at this point. And number two is if you're calling them with something of value, and that something of value is uh, that they look forward to hearing about, then you're all of a sudden going to find that they look forward to not just have, uh, seeing you, but having conversations with you. That's right. And that's all coming up in our def- different methods. We actually have five different methods. We probably won't do all five today about how to expand and more easily speak with your center of influence. And you just hit our top points here uh, just to get this in your notes. The first one was make it all about them. When you stop making it about you, Tim, to your point, they are not thinking about you. It makes it ever so much easier. But start that. Yes. Start with that in your head, though. That's right. Can you know Talk to yourself first before you worry about talking to them. So make it all about them. The next thing you said was bring something of value. I wrote down, don't be weird about what you do. You make it harder on yourself when you make yourself uncomfortable being a salesperson. All right, let's stop there because yeah. that's really another, that's a very salient mindset mm-hmm. point again. It is. So if you're thinking about, test yourself on this listeners right now. You know, there's tens of thousands of you that listen to us on a regular basis. This is the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. So here's a, a question for you, and I want you to really do this. If you have to call Grace's situation, somebody that you have not been in contact with for a long period of time, we're going to right now, you're going to pick up your cell phone. You're probably listening to us on your cell phone. You're going to flip over to your phone. You're then going to call somebody who is a centers of influence and past client. And you're calling that person with obviously the intent of reconnecting, bringing value, but also you're hoping to generate business from that re, re, that reconnection. What are all the thoughts that are bouncing into your head right now? You're going to make the phone call right now. Your your fingers are now uh, about to you know hover over the numbers on your phone, and you're going to call that person. What is filling in your head right now? I'll tell you. I'll go ahead. I, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to exactly. bug them. I don't want to interrupt them. Yeah, exactly. Fear. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to say it. So you're, you're going. What happens if they say this? What happens if they say that? What? How am I going to feel? What? You know. What? How are they going to look at me? How are they going to? So what happens is your ego is all of a sudden hitting you with this big, like cartoonish sized bat and like mm-hmm. smacking you upside the head to with the, the point, what ifs with all the what ifs and the what ifs kill all your potential. The what ifs that are always going to be there in life, like what if they say this, what if they say that? Here's the way to unplug all of that or at least go on the path to unplugging it. When you're calling somebody, A, have a, a conversation outline or a script in front of you, and you know, w- which obviously we provide for you in our coaching program. And B, the secondary thing is have this written on the top of you know everywhere until you've internalized it. What can I do for you? How can I be of service to you? Because what happens is if you did do the exercise and you did start to manifest all those anxious, anxiety-filled, ego-based thoughts, all the what-ifs, now if you were to then put yourself back in the position where you're about to dial the phone and then ask yourself this question, right? I, I'm going to call this person and I'm going to bring something of value to them, which I know that they will put, you know, they'll appreciate and I'm going to make their life better. In other words, you've moved the conversation internally away from all the what ifs your ego wants you to basically be fearful of. And you've moved it towards how can I help that person? That's how you move past your natural egotistical, and that is what it is, fear of basically being of service to other people. You move the conversation in your head away from making it about you and filling your head with all the what ifs to being about them and being of service to them. And Julie's going to make this very practical with her first point. Yes. So our our other two thoughts were get great at the Ford memory jogger. We're going to talk about this on virtually every method that we're presenting to you and get great at asking for business. And that plays back into stop being weird about what you do. Okay, so method number one, we call the FORD, that stands for Family Occupation Recreation Dreams, plus Market Analysis Offer. So here's how this goes. 
using the Ford memory jogger, again, that's family, occupation, recreation, dreams. These are simply talking points. To start, you're going to open with reconnecting, and, and you have kind of your version, and I have my version of this, but basically, you're breaking the ice. Hi, Max. This is Julie Harris with eXp Realty. How are you? Or how's the family? Depends on how much you know them or what you know about them, maybe um, their spouse's names, their kids. So how's the family, the wife, the kids, the dog, the parrot, whatever you know about them, <laughs> okay? Uh, and allow for some discussion. So here's where some people get tangled up already in their first line of scripting. They're so anxious to say what's next that they forget to listen. So allow for discussion and the inevitable, this is what you want to have happen, how are you and or how's real estate? That's what you're looking for. To which you respond with, I'm doing awesome, Max. I'm so blessed to have such great friends and clients. And gosh, you know, everybody's asking me about this crazy market. So I'm just making sure I'm available to answer your questions. And a lot of my friends and clients are just amazed by how much their home's value has increased in just the past 18 months. You might throw some statistics in if you're being conversational about your own market, which you should know. Or, But it doesn't necessarily have to be that hook, right? It could be a whole bunch of different Again, things, Again, something right? of value. Something though. of value. And if they didn't lead with house real estate, if they just wanted to have a, you know, sort of a look, they're wanting to talk to you about your family, that's fine. Yes. You don't need to lead this or steer the conversation back to about real estate because there's a little end uh, question that you're going to ask them. So remember the family occupation, recreation, dreams, that's Ford. So if all you talk to them about is family, if that's the whole conversation, that's great because you're going to end the conversation with a little script we're about to give you. Yes. Well, so my next part here was, would you like me to run some numbers and see what your home was likely worth in today's market if you go the CMA route, right? So you can uh, do this on the phone. You can do a more formal approach. You can do it at a coffee, but you can also simply, and this is one of the methods that comes up later, Tim, you were jumping ahead with the, I know. the effervescent script that goes, whom do you know who could use my help buying or selling real estate? Who should I be talking with? about buying or selling real estate. So Julie did. Julie and I do have different approaches and these scripts are all in our coaching program. Um, but the other, the other way to go about having a conversation opener, if you have not called them in a long period of time, but again, they're not keeping track, so it doesn't really matter, right. is you call them up and you simply say, um, you know, it's funny that you used our dog's name, by the way, Max. He was bugging me while I was writing this. I, I'm guessing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll use Max too. Hey, Max, this is Tim Harris uh, with eXp Realty. So listen, um, I've been getting a lot of calls, emails, people seemingly messaging me out of the blue. Everyone's asking me questions about what's going on with the crazy real estate market. Mm -hmm. And so that, you, so that you don't have to worry, um, I'm, you know, I'm calling all my friends, my family, the people I know, love, and care about, and I'm offering to start providing uh, for them a monthly update on what their mo home's uh, value is. And I've actually already created your home's value report for you now, and I'd like to share it with you. So, Everyone is going to want that. Right. So that's what my conversation opener is. And, and it, depending on what, how, like, so Julie's is much less, I will use the word aggressive. Yes. Or direct. You jumped right in, assuming that they wanted it and offered it to them. I started with a few more questions. And the way I softened it is by saying, I've been getting a lot of calls, emails, communications. And I might throw a joke in there, smoke signals or something like that, just to make mm -hmm. them laugh. And, and of people from, you know, my past clients, my friends, my family, people I know, love, and care about. Now, I've kind of covered the gambit. And if someone's listening, the last thing they're going to hear is they're going to hear no love and care about. So their subconscious mind is now registering the fact that Tim no loves and cares about me. And this is the reason he's calling this information. Now, you, some of your egos are listening and they're saying, oh, that's some BS. That person is listening to you call them and thinking that you just want to sell them something. That's what you're telling yourself as your excuse not to do the work. Which is why you haven't called them yet. Back to the ego problem. Which is the reason that basically you're buying leads and you're struggling mm -hmm. in your real estate business because you're not willing to move past your ego's natural resistance to something that might put it in a position of being in psychological harm's way, right? And that's the reason you don't do it. But then what's going to happen is, as Julie said, most of them are going to say, yes, I am interested. What do you have? And then all I want you to do is give them a quick snapshot of their home's value. And that could just be an absorption thing. Like, um, you know, I was in the gym this morning with Julie and we met somebody whose name was, now I forgot, uh, I'll remember in a second. <laughs> I don't think you told me. All right, help you out. Yeah. Um, 
gosh, that's going to bug me. I don't remember his name. But I had met him before. Mm-hmm. And um, we ended up talking about He didn't know Julie and I. He recognized us from the community, but he didn't know us. He didn't know we had any background in real estate, or at least I don't think he did. I mean, mm-hmm. he's probably a podcast listener as far as I know. <laughs> but we ended up talking about the fact of what's going on in the community. And Julie and I have been, and Zoe have been gone for 60 days and going on our U.S. tour and how everything has changed. And here's all I said. Espe- Remember, we don't sell real estate. And this is all I said, especially the real estate market. So here I'm having this conversation with this virtual stranger, and we're just sort of connecting. Um, he's on his way out the door. I'm on my way out the door. Um, and that was the conversation. And I steered the conversation to talk about real estate. And then he and I ended up having like a 15 or 20-minute conversation about real estate. Yeah, but look how it started out. You started right. out without even consciously starting out. You did the Ford script. You talked about our family being on our 60-day road trip. That's F for family, right? Yeah. Occupation, I think you guys probably, you know, did a little bit we of that. Did. Recreation, you're in the gym, right? right? I mean, the Ford thing is such, I uh, once you get used to doing it, it just becomes part of you. Right. And it's so conversationally valuable because of just the pattern that it creates. But I all I was doing is just asking him questions. Yes. And I, and it, it naturally, as you said, steered back towards real estate uh, because everyone likes talking about real it's estate. It's easy. It's especially like easy this. right now to talk about real estate because oh, yeah. there's so many headlines about yeah. it. But truthfully, Julie, everybody yeah. wants to talk about real All estate ever, no matter what's going on in the market, right. no matter where. Except I'm realtors, you know, because they don't want to talk about <laughs> exactly. what they do for a living. Exactly. Yeah, true. Other than them. So if you want to be able to have more courage having conversations about uh, real estate with strangers, give up your real estate license because as Julie <laughs> just said, yeah. there's something that's strange that happens that normal people will talk about real estate flu- with lots of fluidity. And a real estate agent will try to be a secret agent and never talk about it because their egos are still full, filled with, oh, my gosh, if I bring up real estate, they're going to think the only reason I wanted to be friends with them is to sell them a house. I know. So weird. Okay. So method number two is this is from one of our coaches that uh, helps me run the Facebook Live stuff for our Premier Coaching members. Uh, and he said, take the 30-day challenge, which is 30 coffee or Zoom coffee dates in 30 days, depending on people's comfort level. Meet at Starbucks, your local coffee shop, bakery, et cetera. And here's a tip that um, I have had a coaching client tell me about this. If somebody else in your database owns a place like this, a bakery or a coffee shop, go there all the time and support them. And how many of your past clients and centers of influence can you meet with in a 30-day period? What if you met with two at a time? Well, so Steve and I talked about this too, and he mm-hmm. said with his coaching clients, what he's doing um, is he's doing the 250 day, or no, no, the 250. He, the goal is to add 250 people to your centers of influence and past mm-hmm. client list by the end of the year. And his sifting and sorting system was very good because he essentially said most centers of influence and past clients lists have a shelf life of about 24 months. Mm-hmm. And he said, not every center of influence, and we know all this, obviously it's in our book. Yeah, but I remember he said something about um, filtering and purifying your yeah. list fairly well, regularly. Well, not everybody, now this is where it starts to sound um, a little bit harsh, I think, but let's just, keep, let's just keep it basic. Mm-hmm. Not every person in the center of influence and past client list is going to have the same value to your business, not as a human, right? Yep. So because some people are going to be naturally wanting to send you referrals. They're going to be almost like little beacons in the marketplace of people that are going to send you business. Other people are going to be never send you business. You're going to do a deal with them. You're going to do a great, and they'll call you in seven years, do another deal with you. Um, they're not ever going to refer anybody to you. They, they're, you know, cube bank at work could say, I want to buy a house. They're not going to send you a lead. It's just not how they're wired. They won't think like that. You can still call them, but don't call them as frequently. Don't waste as much time with people that you already know are not going to be on, say, for example, the more um, you know, emotionally uh, relationship-building, expressive, amiable side of the spectrum. And unfortunately or fortunately, that's not always true. You might find somebody's analytical that's going to be a great you know, referral source for you. But you're going to have to determine that. And after a little bit of time of communicating with the people, if they're not receptive to you communicating with them, let alone sending you referrals, then you need to deprioritize them in your list because what's going to happen is, and this is the other, you know, you do need to purge your list every 24 months. If someone hasn't done another deal with you or they haven't referred you somebody in 24 months, they're not going to. So just get them or out of your list. they haven't once called you back to have that conversation. You can't get a hold of them. The goal is not to have a gigantic list. That's really where the punchline is. And that's what a lot of you have been poorly trained to believe. Mm -hmm. That at the end of the day, if you have this massive list and you digitally drip on them constantly, which sounds disgusting, by the way, (laughs) that after an amount of time, you're going to have enough people that you've dripped upon that they're going to then magically start sending you a consistent amount of business. Because what's happened is the statistics have been like, so the theory is, though I'm not sure this has ever been proven to be true, 
that if you have, say, for example, you know, 250 people in your database, and these are people you communicate with at a high level using our scripts on a regular basis. And by the way, we want you calling them, not dropping garbage off at their house. Just call them. That's the key. Trust me when I tell you, mm -hmm. a thousand pumpkin pies is not worth a single phone call wishing them happy Thanksgiving. Completely different uh, experience that someone's going to have. And you guys who are, you know, uh, into the tchotchke dropping off business and you run bakeries around the holidays, giving all your centers of influence and past clients stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Just pick up the phone and call them, save the money, and actually get some business from your uh, actual efforts. But the punchline here is if they're not sending you business after 24 months, you should purge them from your system. Not every single person in your center of influence and past client list has the same value to your business. And so you need to, again, prioritize the ones that have tried to send you business or have sent you business and treat those people like gold. Now, the statistics say, again, let's just assume for the sake of conversation, it's accurate, that if you have 250 people in your database, 25 of those people will either do a deal or be in a position to refer you somebody every single year. So the challenge is, and this is where the fallacy is on the centers of influence of past client marketing, so I'm just pointing this out to you, is that you're not the only agent who has that same person uh, as a center of influence of past client. So if you were the only agent who was um, essentially marketing to that particular person, then you would obviously have a very high likelihood of getting a referral to, uh, you know, from them. But nowadays it doesn't work like that because, you know, the gal who cuts her hair is a, uh, has a real estate license. The neighbor has a real estate license and they, you know, all the brother-in-law just got his real estate license. And so you're going to be competing with other people who are also marketing to those people under the guise of centers of influence and past clients. And that's where the fallacy is on the traditional center of influence and past client marketing that's being taught to agents. That's the reason that Julie and I um, insist that our coaching clients at least seriously consider picking up the phone and calling people. And we've heard stories, again, I'm going to go back and really drill down on this because not every one of you listen to us every day. We've heard many stories of you guys um, joining, a, 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 let's say, a competing coaching program. And the coaching program's premise is that you're going to buy tchotchkes. You're going to buy stuff. Forget me not seeds in April and all that. And then you're going to then hand deliver or mail all this stuff to these people creating in this the psychological preponderance of reciprocity, right? If you give somebody enough little presents and tchotchkes and garbage, they're going to somehow psychologically be uh, uh, burdened by uh, – uh, what would it be? Almost making that, paying that debt through sending you a center of influence to past client. So what it is is basically it's it's emotional manipulation. That's what all that stuff is. Agreed. You have to because it's obviously true. Yes. You know. But here's the problem. So many agents have never learned the skill set or the mindset to actually pick up the phone and have meaningful conversations. And they all have gravitated towards what they perceive as to be the easy button. And they're dropping and off the so forgive me thought seats. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. Julie and I bought this house on, and it was in uh, Texas. And it was, I was uh, thinking exactly the same thing. Fawn Glenn, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And this gal knew who we were. She maybe was a podcast listener. There was some attachment to it. She wasn't a coaching client. She it was her listing. That we she had. wasn't part of, right. She was her listing. Um, and anyway, so we, we went and, uh, you know, we bought the house. It was her listing. We didn't use a buyer's agent. We, you know, just came for sale. We wanted to buy it. We didn't screw around. That's how we roll. You know, okay. how a lot of your buyers roll too, by the way, which is the reason that you need to be the listing agent because buyers are all going to listing agents directly. So, you know, we bought the house from her. I think we paid whatever she was asking. It was fine. We knew it was going to be what we wanted. Um, it looked like a junkyard when we bought it, but we made it really nice. It up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, in that house, we bought it for 375,000. 365. And how many years ago did we buy that? Four, maybe? Yeah. Maybe five. Yeah, we put I some money into four. it, but now yeah. it's worth 750 I mean, yeah. that's insane. I know. That's Central that's Texas crazy. for you. Yeah. Well, so so she, and, and we are in contact with other agents in the marketplace too, who we looked at properties and maybe we want to look at this or the other thing, and they added us to their centers of influence and past clients. So we started getting, her, she and other agents were all dropping off the same exact tchotchkes at our house. At almost like the same exact like two week period. Like soon as we, I remember all these little plastic doodads with her business rain card gauges. and rain gauges. And it's also and, why at least an acre of that property actually blooms with forget me not seeds because yeah, there were probably. so many of them. Yeah, but but even at our other property, we'd have agents that would start yeah. dropping off the stuff, and and what they didn't realize was there were five other agents dropping off the yes. same garbage at our door and all that was going in the trash can and here and none of them stopped to have a conversation or knocked on the no. door none of them called us i know now i don't maybe they're afraid of us i don't doubt i don't think that's the reason why 
I mean, Julie's kind of scary, but I'm certainly no, but I I'm, I'm like a puppy. Uh, we and we do we do talk about some of these pop by things. We t- do a wrapping paper thing that we talk to coaching clients about. But the key is to but, knock on the door. Key, okay, so here's a funny story. I had a coaching client say, um, you know, I I got like 300. Of the, this is basically um, around Christmas time. You do a roll of wrapping paper and your business card, and you have a little saying that's like, friends don't let friends get wrapped up with the wrong realtor. <laughs> you know, you make it fun. You put a candy cane on the top. We'll talk about that in the holidays. So it's not that we're so adamantly against the idea. It's just that the point can be lost. You're supposed to be talking to people. Well, yes. this coaching client was like, I don't know where all my business is. I got 200 of these things out. I said, well, tell me about how your conversations went. And she goes, well, I didn't have any conversations. I just drove by and threw them on the porch. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you're missing the point. And, the, and these other coaching companies that are basically margining all this junk that they're selling to these agents. Well, they're not really a coaching company, are they? They're uh, selling tchotchke. They're, yeah, you, you, you buy $250 uh, rain gauges from this company and they send them to you. They're sitting in your office, like sort of staring at you like mm-hmm. some sort of evil mm-hmm. demon because – you know, you're somehow supposed to get these out to the door. And and maybe you're you're not going to – how are you going to actually – you're now supposed to go and drop all these things off of the doors, have some kind of conversation. You're not going to have time to sleep. Whereas if you just basically been following our very simple system that's focused on picking up the phone, you would have taken your list of 250 people. You would have divided evenly by 30, right, the number of days in a month. And then some people are going to get a call every month, your higher priority ones. And then some of them are going to get a call every six months. And then you're going to end up on a regular basis making direct phone call contacts uh, and saying something and delivering something of value like what Julie and I are sampling for you. And that's how you're supposed to actually do the business. And nobody – like, I'll get, let's just go back to the idea of, you know, we're deliver- – so you call everyone. You use Julie's, uh, I think, more passive script or you use the script I shared with you guys, whichever. But you got to set the conversation up for the next call. And here's how you say it. And this is what Julie was uh, signaling earlier is you simply say to them at the end of every phone call. Now, let's say you, you called them and you just forwarded them and you just talked about family occupation, whatever. You never actually brought up real estate. Before you get off the phone, simply say, oh, by the way, before I let you go, who do you know is thinking about buying or selling real estate that I should be helping? That's it. And some of our coaching clients, some of our best coaching clients, uh, will never prospect in the truest sense. They will barely have the types of conversations that we are. You, we obviously try to get them to do. But they do ask the, uh, their version, which is usually a lighter weight version of that question. But they get business from it because people will sometimes like, you know, when you don't ask for business and there are centers of influence and past client and you just drop off tchotchkes to their house, I want you to tell me what they th- are actually thinking. You know, Tim and Julie are too busy. They couldn't have knocked on the door. You know, I had Beth who didn't give me a rain cage and five pumpkin pies, but she calls me every 30 days and she's, you know, evidently I, uh, you know, she, I'm someone she know loves or cares about because that's what (laughs) she says. And and, and she provides me with my market's value. And And she answers my question. And she answers my question. So, so I I love Tim and Julie's 15 rain gauges and their 37 uh, and, you know, pumpkin pies they've given me over the years, but I'm definitely using Beth because she and I are friends because she's been calling me on a regular basis and answering all my real estate questions. And I haven't had to think about it. Mm-hmm. You guys see the difference? <laughs> There's a huge difference. It's everything. So stop being it's weird about ball it. ball wax. Yes, yeah, stop being weird about it. Okay, I think we're going to do uh, our further methods uh, tomorrow, unless you feel like we have time. To no, I'm trying it. to get you to, you know, I, sometimes you and I are so used to presenting this information because yes. we've had so many coaching calls. Uh, mm-hmm. And we obviously our podcasts are more about yeah. an overview, right? Mm-hmm. This is a thirty thousand mile view on sure. our center That's of influence, right. and past client. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. some of you are going to feel inspired to actually want to build your center of influence and past client business in a way that doesn't require all your time, effort, and money to get the maximum results from it. We have a whole section in Premier Coaching. It's all about that, and it's one of our favorite uh, sections. And by the way, center of influence and past client. That is the very first spoke that we ask for all of you to create for your lead generation wheel. And in some cases, dare I say, once you really have built a robust center of influence of past clients spoke, the other spokes, depending on who you are in your market and how effective you are at working it, mm-hmm. your other spokes uh, they don't necessarily have to be proactive generate, uh, lead generation. Yeah, though our clients that are really good at this particular spoke, they I have to say they tend to be happier because – I mean, these are relationships, right? This is the kind of deal you guys all love. If you could choose something, it would be somebody referring to you or past client or repeat client. So our, our clients that are really good at this, I would agree with you, even though, of course, they have other spokes going. If this well, is the lead spoke, it puts less pressure on having to be great at all this other stuff. Exactly. And many quickly realize that the other stuff they don't even have to do. 
But I'll tell you that a center of influence of past client based business is if you have a high enough sale price, mm -hmm. you prob if you work this well, like what we just, ex you know, we're going to tell them yeah. the next couple of days, you probably are pretty much set. Well, this is true. The only cautionary tale I would put out there, because I agree with you, um, is that you have to be very consistent talking with them. You won't get the 10% return or better if you just have a list. You have to actually communicate with them because what happens is if you only talk to them now and then, like when you get low on listings or something, and the market changes on you and you're very dependent on that list, you know, the only listings you ever take are that kind of thing, and you haven't been talking to them, that business can can be more at risk well, because so, they don't have as strong other skills. So that is something we need to drill down on the next show. But yeah. because the fact is, is your center of influence and past client list can age out and die out. Well, that's right. And, you know, there's different versions of that. But the main thing is when you're communicating and answering questions and educating your database about what's actually happening in the real estate market, what, right now that's really good stuff by and large. But when it starts to adjust and change a little bit and you're keeping them in the loop, then you're going to have a lot better transition into a different type of market. The discipline is, is that you have to be adding people to your center of influence and past client list. Now, the That's best right. way to do it is actually having uh, past clients that you're adding to the list, you know, people you just transacted right. with. That's ideal. But there are other things that we teach you how to do. Those like, are future points. And that's a future points yeah. that we're going to be talking about. Um, and, you know, we just shared with you some of them. It just happens organically when you're just out and about and using Julie's Ford script. It should, right? <laughs> yeah. Then you're going to add more people. Bobby was his name. Yes, ah, that's right. Bobby. So Bobby, <laughs> who I met at the uh, gym uh, this morning, right? If I were in real estate, I would have gotten his information mm -hmm. and I would have added him to my center of influence and past client list. I would have said, would you, and I would have said to him, is it okay that I contact you periodically and let you know what's going on in the real estate market? And he would that's have, right. of course, said yes, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. Bobby's new center of influence and past client. That's How right. many people does Bobby know? Right. So that's how you start to expand. How many added people does Bobby know? So I'm going to call him. I'm going to give him his update of what's going on in the market. And then I'm going to say, hey, Bobby, by the way, who do you know who's thinking about buying or selling real estate that I should be helping in this market? And he probably will not give me anybody for maybe the first, maybe one or two regular contacts. But I promise you, he's going to start being a bird dog for us in the community and letting us know about people that he heard right. of that might be interested. It's not because he wouldn't have known or doesn't know, you know a thousand other agents. It's because we ask. Yes, it's the That's conversations. Why. It's the conversations. You made me think about uh, the gentleman we met with last night. Very interesting, fascinating business. And that was also, you didn't realize it, but also a result of the Ford script because we're talking about occupation and a very specific twist to the real estate business. You You're remember. talking about the yacht guy? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, a totally different uh, aspect of real estate, but it was conversational. And, you know, what a great connection. You talk about who they know and who they know. It's all about making those connections. So they, one of our coaches had a saying back in the recession that secret agents have skinny kids. Yeah. You know, you can't be out in the about, out in the wild, and be weird about real estate. You have to talk about what you do. And especially in times like this where everybody's got some curiosity about it. When you uh, interviewed Frederick Eklund, he said, you know, everybody has real estate on their mind. Everybody. They're talking about leasing, buying, flipping, selling, renting. Everybody has some but question see, about it. That's ultimately a mindset point because mm -hmm. agents believe that leads are scarce and hard to come by. So right. much to the point where they'll spend, and the number really is, it starts with a B, billions of dollars per year. Yes. In essence, on basically paid lead generation, mm -hmm. right? Building funnels and buying ads buying and doing all this digital stuff mm -hmm. or just buying leads directly from like Zillow and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What they don't realize is that there's no shortage of leads. Leads are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Leads are, like, and, and Fred would, Frederick would say, he walks out of his building mm -hmm. and he goes, you know, everywhere around me, everybody needs some place to live. That's an they attitude either, of abundance. They too. either want to buy yeah. something, buy another thing, sell something, lease something, mm -hmm. lease another thing. They want to buy a place in Paris. Flip something, develop something. Exactly. And then, everybody yeah. around him is sur he's surrounded elbow to elbow with opportunity. He doesn't. So it starts with not thinking that it's hard to find, realizing that it's everywhere. But your job is to essentially, of all the people around you, then uh, determine, and this is what we teach you in our coaching program, which one of those people are have the most urgency to actually want to transact. And that comes back to a skill set that some of you, frankly, uh, will never learn. And I, I realize that because you're, what we're saying makes sense to you, but the emotional um, disconnect is the effort that's required. That's right. And, and ultimately, that is the truth. And I know, having done this for two decades, I know at this point that some of you are not yet ready to listen to what we're saying. And I accept that. But for those of you who are, I want you to seriously consider becoming one of our coaching clients. And we've made it easy for you. Just text the word SUCCESS 
to 47372. Text the word success to 47372. And we're going to text you back and uh, we're going to give you a, 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 you know, a book that you can download. But also you're going to be entitled to a conversation with one of our new member coaches. So go ahead now and text the word success to 47372. Uh, now, I want to... Uh, also uh, underline something. A couple weeks ago or a week ago, we talked about the fact that we were going to create our, uh, our fourth quarter plan. Yes. Okay. We really thought about that. And what we want to do is we want to actually enhance that because there was a lot of interest in that. We want to enhance it. We're going to make that into an actual, I would say, coaching light coaching program. So there's going to be information coming on that probably in the next two weeks, obviously in plenty of time for fourth quarter. But in essence, the goal is going to be is to create a massive amount of motivation, action, and then obviously results for all of you guys in fourth quarter so that your first quarter takes off like a rocket ship. That new program is going to not be expensive. It's going to be available to everyone. It's going to be unique. Um, and it's going to be uh, Julie and I and our coaches are, are going to provide the content and obviously the ongoing training. It's going to be a 90 day program, obviously designed around essentially giving you the most motivation for the uh, last quarter of the year into the new year. We have yet, yet to name it. Yes, but it will be coming soon, but that will be included with Premier Coaching. So those of you in Premier Coaching, we're going to include that. So no worries there because we want you guys to be extremely successful uh, as you wrap the year up, which is amazing to think of since it's just barely September, but still here we are. I know. Refer to previous uh, podcasts where we're having you count the numbers of actual (laughs) work days. What was it, 80? Uh, 70 to 80 at this point, maybe a little bit less. It's incredible. So guys, thank you for continuing to make this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. And I say that because we're listened to in over 60 different countries. We really sincerely appreciate the honor of being your coach or your future coaches. Um, So if you want to talk with Julie and I about joining us at eXp, if you're eXp Realty, if you're eXp Realty bound as many of you are, and you're looking for a sponsor that's going to be proactive in your success at eXp, and you've not yet chosen your sponsor, Julie and I are formally applying for the job of being your sponsors at eXp Realty. Please text me directly at 512-758-0206. That is my cell phone. Please do not call. Please do text 512-758-0206. In the meantime, have a fantastic day, and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow.